I don't know who set off a stink cloud in the studio, but it's starting to smell pretty bad with these games. Since the end of 2023, a lot of MMOs have gone through a lot of controversy and the problems have started to pile up. Not only have we already seen MMOs borderline scam their players and go downhill before their official release, but now we're seeing highly anticipated MMOs starting to fail and lose traction due to the mixture of lack of content, pay to win, bots, or devs lying to their player base. In today's video, I'll be talking about what Blue Protocol and Throne and Liberty are, how they're failing, and what I believe they could do to fix their issues. First on the list is Blue Protocol, an action-packed high fantasy MMO being developed by Bandai Namco. The game itself has already gone through some controversy, though, in the States and in Japan as well. In the States, you can primarily find people mad either because of the censorship of the cosmetics or because their account got banned after playing on the Japanese server. But the main source of drama in the States came from Amazon Games or like thereof, as it truly felt Amazon Games was sleeping and purposely trying to withhold information on the game's release. On the other hand, in Japan, the main source of controversy was the emptiness to the game, as many people believe the game was super easy to grind up in, allowing players to rarely, if ever, return to a zone. That being said, the devs have gone through and updated the game immensely, helping with dead zones, allowing for players to have a need to return back to the beginning. The game itself, though, is fairly clean and simple to understand, as in the game you can take on full dungeons, towers, boss fights, far breeze sources and even farm transmog for character customization. Each one of these activities can be done with yourself or with other players. On average, most parties are a maximum of five players while still seeing others in the world. Although while doing raids or world bosses, you'll usually team up with 20 to 30 players to complete them. My personal favorite feature is the amount of class and character customization when it comes to builds, as not only there are different skill trees to go through, but different elements you can get on your weapons as well, making builds allowed to be very unique in the player's own way. Overall, I'd say the game looks very clean, especially if you like the anime art style and super flashy combat, but the game is facing major issues, as not only has the player population severely reduced, but they're really not making any money off of the game. To the point, Bandai Namco has put out multiple articles talking about them canceling five different games. While I take a serious look at the ones they publish to hopefully start releasing high quality games instead of quantity. On top of this, it shows in multiple articles they're down over 96% of profits this last year, especially after the fantastic year they had on Elden Ring's release. I feel like comparing their overall yearly sales to the year Elden Ring released is kind of weird though. It's kind of like the Chicago Bulls saying that their jersey sales are down the year after Michael Jordan retired. If I was the Blue Protocol devs though, I would force the game to fit a certain audience to make more profit, as it feels they're currently trying to make the game to everyone's liking and they're failing. So instead, I'd either make the game super gotcha and make the graphics more fit Japan, or I completely delete all of the gotcha and add some interesting game loops and make the game more appeal to Western countries. As it seems most of the game's hype right now comes from the Western content creators such as MMO Byte, Canon, and myself, constantly posting game updates and news on the games to keep Westerners up to date on the game. But most anyone asked currently says the same thing, that they won't play because of the gotcha system or lack of content, or the fact that it already failed in Japan. Overall, Blue Protocol looks amazing, but if they don't change anything before releasing it in the States, then the game will most definitely fail. Modern Liberty is an action-packed high fantasy MMO being made by NCSoft that is already released in Korea and is soon to be released in the States. This MMO doesn't really have anything super unique, but watching it and playing it feels really refreshing as if I'm interacting with a older MMO. If you're a fan of static combat from games like Lineage 2, there's a high chance that you'll really enjoy the style as well. One thing I really enjoy in this game is the massive PvP battles that reminds me of ESO's world PvP. I also really appreciate how the combat is very flow-like, making it seem as if all your skills blend together. The biggest issue in the game currently is the slight pay to win. With this pay to win, you're able to buy items on the store and sell them on the market similar to black desert online you can't buy max out items as the market only goes up to a certain item tier and from what i've heard almost no one uses the pay to win systems as they're not really worth using at all third liberty devs are smoking something though over the last few months the game has been plagued with bots and players using auto farm program forcing many legit players to complain to the devs that these are unfair because players who farm more in third liberty have a massive advantage in the main aspects of the game dungeons and pvp so if you're able to farm infinitely it can easily make your guild unbeatable in fact canon a content creator is in one of the current top guilds and made a full video of people doing auto farming, making a subpar guild on his server jump to the best guild within almost a few weeks making it where Cannon's guild that was number one had a fight against blatant cheaters and barely won. I guess they're just better. But from my understanding, the devs don't care about this whatsoever. On top of the auto farming, bots are a major issue. As from what I've seen and been told, you can barely walk five feet without seeing a bot. In fact, it's getting so bad, NCSoft says they're down 31% profits this year and decided to not release their Throne and Liberty profits. Instead, they released their Guild Wars 2 profits, showing that it is currently up 15%. It's a bad day for a product when a company won't release that product stats. I believe if they want to fix the botting, it's really easy. All they have to do is make it where you have to confirm your email and a phone number. I'd even add a job to the company for bot control that would allow an admin to fly around and ban people as needed. On top of these things, the game is fairly pay to win, 
meaning when it does release in the West, it will fail, especially if auto farms, bots, and pay to win aren't fixed to an extreme. I believe this is another example of a game trying to fit into too many categories. But what the devs don't realize is that you either have to make the game fit to the Korean MMO experience or the Western MMO standards. Because if you teeter in the middle, both player bases will hate the game. I will probably still play Throne Liberty when it releases in the States just to see how good it is and review it. But being that the Korean players already hate the game, this game might be really, really bad. But I will definitely say this game will definitely be up there with Lost Ark and New World for the greatest MMO flops ever, especially if they change nothing. What I want to say is I honestly don't understand how these devs are continuously making games. Like, are they not doing research on what works and what doesn't work in their countries and in other countries as well? Or are they getting really unlucky and they're getting misfed information from the companies that they are working with? because this doesn't make any sense to me. Amazon games, right, should be able to easily tell both of these companies like, hey, this stuff is not going to work in the States. Just period. This stuff will not work. Now, I know these companies want money, and I know that's overall what a company is about is making money. But the thing is, is you, they would make more money by taking out the pay to win aspects from the game than they ever will with keeping those in the game. If you make a 10 out of 10 MMO, but it has pay to win and you release it in the States, people won't play the MMO. But if you make a 10 out of 10 MMO and it doesn't have pay to win, you will make so much money, especially if you are just putting skins in the game. So it doesn't make sense to me. I, I kind of feel bad for these guys. So either they're getting misfed information from the companies they're working with to publish these games in the States, or they just aren't doing research. And at that point, it's on those companies shoulders that it's it's their fault because they could be trying to do the research, but they could be getting misinformation and they can't really do much about that. What sucks about these MMOs though is I was really looking forward to them. I think a lot of people were and genuinely, I don't know who set off a stink cloud in the studio, but it's starting to smell pretty bad with these games. Blue Protocol and Throne Liberty look amazing, but if these issues continue to plague both games, they will fail in the US and in their own countries as well. It sucks to say, but most of their MMO advice for Western countries probably comes from Amazon games, making where these MMOs have already gained a bad reputation by just working with them. Although if the devs are smart, they'll start looking at all the criticism from the communities and truly change the games into masterpieces. Going into the future, I'll keep everyone up to date on these games and review them as well. I'm really curious to see these games grow. Let me know what MMO you're looking forward to in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.